In our study of divine science, we must scrutinize the Holy Scriptures for very important messages that sometimes we do not easily grasp. Today, we will talk about the three things God expects from man, a sure way to salvation. Micah 6, verse 8 You have already been told what is good. You have already been told what the Lord expects of you, to practice justice, to love mercy, and to humble yourselves before your God. According to the prophet Micah, only three things are needed to please the Lord and thus obtain salvation. Today we are going to meditate on these three important things that will make it easier for us to please God and obtain salvation. The first way to please God is to practice justice, in other words, righteousness. The just man plays the role of the judge who examines the good and the bad in every situation, and using mercy, makes decisions that favor his neighbor. In our present times, injustice reigns accompanied by power. This is why human beings seek progress at the cost of the poverty of other human beings on whom they impose their power. Riches are the false god that dominates humanity and causes exploitation. Here we can say the same, the big fish eats the small fish, because we live in a world of need, where the poor need the rich to survive, and the rich exploit the poor for their own benefit. Due to the difficulty of acquiring wealth, the human being resorts to all kinds of illicit ways to get money, and in this process the poor and the rich alike fall. Failing the Lord in this, his first request about justice. The just man always acts well before his neighbor and is appreciated by God. The Lord gives us a golden rule about righteousness in Matthew 7, verse 12. So in everything, do to others what you would like them to do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. And to put it another way, don't do to others what you wouldn't like them to do to you, because this way righteousness will reign. The second way to please the Lord is to love mercy, or to love mercifully. And Jesus exhorts us in Luke 6 verse 36 to be merciful as our Heavenly Father is merciful, because mercy is the perfection of love. God asks us in the first commandment Mark 12, verse 30, to love him with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, with all our strength, and with all our being. Jesus also tells us that we should love our neighbor as ourselves, because in these two concepts is gathered all the law of God. This love of neighbor becomes a great challenge for our spirituality. We know well how to love ourselves, and we do it beyond perfection so much, so that we arrive at self-love, a love that is so selfish that it displaces the love of God, and of course, it displaces more easily the love of neighbor. Loving our neighbor costs us to deny ourselves in order to please the needs of our neighbor. This is why it is so important to learn to be generous and to give alms, because in this self-denial is found the perfection of love of neighbor. Likewise, in every act of physical or spiritual charity, to love mercifully calls us to love our neighbor as Christ has loved us. He gave his life for all of us, and in the same way he expects us to perfect merciful love so that divine love can be glorified by being transmitted from Christ to the soul and from the soul to other souls. The glory of God is that love flows in all his creation, since God is love. When we love, we allow God's love to flow through us to other human beings. Christ Jesus loves us so much that with his love, he saved us. Now, we in imitation of Christ can offer our lives as living sacrifices of love and mercy for our neighbor, imitating him and allowing his love to flow. Romans 12, verse 1 Jesus teaches us in the Lord's Prayer 
to pray for everyone, not just for ourselves. Instead of concentrating on struggling to earn our salvation, we should concentrate on struggling spiritually to obtain the salvation of others. In this way, we will perfect love and turn it into true mercy. But we must also be aware of false mercy that leads to the admiration of others and populism. Let us do as the Lord says. Let not your left hand know what the right hand is doing. Matthew 6, verse 3. And the third way that allows us to please God is to walk humbly in His presence. To humble ourselves before God is to recognize that we are absolutely nothing before our God who is everything to us. If we compare ourselves with the universe, we find something infinite and eternal. We can say then that before such greatness we have no clear way of understanding because it makes us look insignificant, smaller than a particle of dust. We do not even know for sure how it was created. We only know that it was created by God, who is master of time and space. But the universe, in its greatness, is nothing in the hands of the Lord. It is like a particle of dust that is totally dependent on its creator. And even more so is the insignificance of our being before God, for God is existence itself. The life we feel within us, the light and the spirit that fills us, so, these are abstract concepts that we can only accept through faith, and they help us to understand our smallness before God, our Creator. What is man before God? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. For we were created from nothing, and when we die we will feel the nothingness that we are, just as Christ said on the cross, Father, why have you forsaken me? Matthew 27, verse 46. If Christ Jesus, who is the Word of God incarnate, the Son of God, God Himself, who in His sacred humanity depended on the divine will for His existence as man, how could we then, mere creatures, speak with God except in complete humility and reverence? God calls us to walk in humility, to crush pride, to bow down our heads before His divinity. For this reason, so many prayers fail, because man speaks to God and treats Him as if he were another man, because he does not give to God what is God's. Matthew 22, verse 21. Humility is the platform from which one ascends to holiness. It is there that all the saints have been forced. There the Virgin Mary said, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done unto me according to his word. Luke 1, verse 38. There the Lord said, Luke 22, verse 42, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet, not my will, but yours be done. If we want to be holy, that is where we have to annihilate our will and with humility say, Lord, not my will, but yours be done. These are the three things that please the Lord so that we can live holy in His presence all the days of our life. Let us fix them in our heart to practice justice, to love mercy, and to humble ourselves before our God. Let us pray this prayer. Lord, let me act justly, love mercifully, and walk humbly in your presence every day of my life. Amen. If you like this video, please give us a like. Subscribe to our channel, The Work of God. Share on social networks. And don't forget to leave your valuable comments. God bless you.